we're now going to talk about a method called the vortex panel method. And the idea of this method is that uh, if we have an airfoil um, and, uh, and we want to make the, that geometry a streamline of the flow, let's say that we have some velocity coming in, and what we want to do is make this uh, geometry a streamline of the flow so that the flow, uh, the potential flow, uh, will move around that geometry. And uh, so the way we do that is we can put a sheet of vorticity along uh, uh, along the, the uh, edge of the geometry here. So, um, so this would be a, a vortex sheet that would wrap around this airfoil. And uh, we can say that the distance along this surface we would call S, and, uh, and this sheet would have a, a strength that varies with S. And, uh, and, and so if we were to actually place that sheet along there, we could solve for the the sheet strength at every location that would then make that geometry uh, be a streamline of the flow. This is very similar to thin airfoil theory, where we basically just uh, made the camber line of the airfoil a streamline by by putting a, a sheet of vorticity uh, there and, and so or along the camber line, and so that made the camber line a streamline of the flow. So we're doing the same type of thing here, except we're now going to include thickness. We're not just going to look at the camber line. Uh, we're also going to include uh, the thickness and and put the sheet of vorticity along the outer edge of this uh, of this geometry. So uh, doing this with a vortex sheet is actually a bit tricky. And so what we're going to use instead of a vortex sheet is we're going to use a series of vortex panels. So we will. Um, we will represent this airfoil by a series of panels. And I'm gonna draw them a little bit coarse here, but they're just straight panels that would lie along the geometry here. Um, and we'd have a series of points around this airfoil that define the ends of, um, of each of these panels. And so I'll just label these here um, so we'd have like point one, two, three, four, five, and we usually start at the bottom and wrap around to the top. Okay, so those are our series of points, and uh, we have them wrapped around the airfoil here, and we're going to model the flow by putting in um, a vortex panel between each of these Points. Okay, so between each point here, or each each of the neighboring points, we're going to have a vortex panel, and uh, and that panel I'll just draw here. Uh, so we'll have uh, a panel, and uh, it will have a strength of uh, say i at one end, and i and the strength that of i plus one at the uh, or a strength at i plus one. I guess I should say. And we're going to assume that the strength of these panels varies linearly. So let's just say that we have um, uh, uh, the, the, at i, this is really low strength, and then it increases linearly until it gets to a stronger strength at i plus 1. So we're going to assume that, um, or really we're going to force each of these panels um, to, to change linearly um, in vortex strength. Uh, but at any at any point, um, uh, the value of the strength can't be discontinuous. So whatever you know, whatever strength this last panel leaves off at, must be the strength that the next panel starts at. So that the 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 vorticity, the strength of vorticity, is uh, continuous around the um, around the airfoil. Okay, so. Uh, so let's just write a couple of these things down. Um, we're going to use a vortex panel, and uh, the, it will vary linearly 
in strength. And uh, if we have n points, let's say that we've got uh, n points around this airfoil, that means we're going to have n minus 1 panels, okay, uh, which is pretty simple to show. Now, um, so now we need to figure out what the strengths are. We, we have n unknowns, so we've got n uh, unknown uh, values for gamma, right? So gamma i through gamma n. And uh, what we need to do is figure out the strength of each of those corner points that would then make this um, this geometry a, a, a streamline of the flow. So the way we're going to do that is we will place uh, what are called control points at the center of each panel. So I'm just putting a little circle here for that control point. So we'll put one at the center of each panel and um, and at each of those points we know what the normal, uh, just from the geometry of the panel, we can estimate what the normal direction is to that panel. Not even estimate, we can just compute it, what the, what the normal direction is uh, to that panel. And what we're going to say is uh, if I look at the velocity at each one of these control points, uh, so I'll just write here uh, the velocity at control point I, for example, and the velocity is a vector. If I dot that with the normal, uh, which this is the normal component at some control point I, or uh, we could... We could uh, draw it there on this panel. Um, so if I dot that with the normal direction, that has to be equal to zero. Okay, what that basically says is that the velocity at that point must be tangential. Uh, my, the total velocity at that location must be tangential to that surface. And if that's true at all of these points, I can refine the grid, and as I refine this grid and put more and more points on this, eventually we will approach this solution um, as n goes to infinity, as the number of points uh, gets large, basically. Now we would never compute this with an infinite number of points, but we're going to show that the solution levels off uh, once you get to a high enough node count. And so we can basically, at that point, we say that the solution is grid converged or grid resolved. Um, and so that's uh, plenty accurate. And, uh, and, but what we're doing is approximating this solution on the left where the, where the vorticity is continuous around the entire airfoil. Okay, so this condition here is what we call a boundary condition. Basically, uh, this boundary condition says that the normal, uh, that, the, that the velocity has to be tangent at each of my control points. Okay, so if we look at the number of panels we have, we have n minus 1 panels, but we have n unknown uh, strengths that we need from gamma i to gamma n. So that means that we are short one equation. We, we have to have the same number of equations as we have unknowns, we have n unknowns, but we only have n minus one equations um, from this development here because we have one less panel over here than we have uh, unknowns or, or points. Okay, so the final condition actually comes from what's called the Cutta condition. And, uh, and that condition it, uh, happens here at the trailing edge and what we say is we want the velocity to come off um, tangent to the to the upper and lower surfaces. Basically, we want it to be an average, roughly, of the upper and lower surfaces. And so, um, or in other words, no flow is allowed to turn this corner. Um, and so, if that's the case, then 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 that means that the the cut condition has been satisfied if the flow comes off tangent there t at the trailing edge. And the way we enforce that is um, uh, in order for that to be true, gamma 1 has to be equal and opposite to gamma n. 
So my very first gamma and my very last gamma, um, which are both coincident right there. So we've got 0.1, and in this example, we have 0.13. They're both coincident there at the trailing edge. So the, the, those have to be equal and opposite in strength. And so that is our final condition. And so now uh, with, this, uh, with this setup here, we now have n equations that must be satisfied. And, and those will help us find our n unknowns. So let's dig into, um, well, this equation here is really simple, the cut of condition. Um, let's dig into this boundary condition here for just a minute and see how we might set that up. So the velocity at any control point, we'll just call it i, is equal to the free stream velocity plus the influence of all of the other panels on that point. So if we just choose a point here, uh, for example, we're looking at this point here, we want to know the velocity at that point. Well, it's equal, it's uh, the free stream velocity plus we're going to have to sum the influence of all of the panels from, uh, we'll call it J equals one up to N minus one. Remember we have N minus one panels and uh, look at the influence of the velocity uh, of panel J on point I. So control point I, uh, and, and so this is, this right here is our, um, is the influence velocity uh, from panel J on point I. We're gonna sum all of those up, okay? Uh, now, um, what we're saying though is that the the dot product of this with the with the normal over here um, has to be equal to zero. So we're gonna we're gonna do the dot product of of uh, all of this stuff and say that that has to be equal to zero. And so what we have is v infinity, and we can do the dot product of that with the uh, normal at panel i plus uh, the summation from j equals 1 to n minus 1 of vji dotted with n i, that has to be equal to 0. Now, um, this, this vji, we're actually going to put in terms of an influence um, matrix and gamma. See, the velocity there, the velocity of any panel on, uh, or excuse me, the induced velocity from a panel on any point is directly proportional to the strength of gamma um, at the two ends of that uh, of that panel, or it's a function of, of the strengths of those. And so we can actually write um, uh, Vji is equal to some uh, influence matrix, we'll call it P, times gamma j uh, and gamma j plus 1. Okay, so we're going to we're going to develop this influence uh, uh, coefficient matrix um, in a in the next video. But uh, but for now, just know that we have some matrix that depends just on the geometry um, and the the orientation of that panel relative to uh, the, the point of interest. So, uh, so this would be, there's going to be some, some matrix here of panel J on control point I. And then we're going to multiply that by gamma J and gamma J plus 1 um, in order to get that uh, velocity. Then we're going to take that velocity and, uh, and dot it with the normal and uh, set that equal and opposite to V infinity times the dot of the normal. Uh, dotted with the normal, and uh, that will give us a, a solution for gamma j and gamma j plus 1. So we're actually going to put this together in a huge matrix that we'll write like this. So we'll have some big matrix of all of those influences, um, and, uh, and then we'll put all of our gammas in a vector here. So we'll go from gamma 1 up to gamma n, and we'll say that that is equal and opposite. We're going to take this stuff and move it over to the right-hand side. And so we'll get some 
uh, we can actually write this as v infinity magnitude times some some vector b here, which is really all of the dot products of v infinity or the or the unit vector in, in v infinity direction with the unit vector in the normal direction for each panel. So this is going to be our uh, we'll be able to write this whole solution in a in a form that looks like this, where now um, see the a matrix is is just dependent on that geometry, the orientation, and uh, the gammas are, are unknowns. And then B, we actually know because we know all of the, the normals um, uh, for the, each of the panels based off of the geometry. So gamma one through gamma N are the only unknowns in this system. And so we can now solve this uh, linear system of equations for the, the panel strengths. Now, one thing I want to point out here is that the very last equation in this matrix is going to be from our cut a condition. So remember, we're only going to have n minus 1 equations here that come from the, this boundary condition, and then we're going to have the cut a condition um, at the trailing edge. And that equation is pretty simple. It just says that one, we're going to have a 1 there, and we're going to have zeros all through here, a 1 there, and then a 0 over here. And basically what that says is gamma 1 plus gamma n equals 0. So that's going to be our cut of condition there in the, in the final uh, line of this matrix. And so in the subsequent videos, we will talk about the development of these A and B matrices um, in order to solve this problem.